today's Farm Basics, we're going to discuss why many farmers have a tougher time controlling broadleaf weeds than they do controlling grass weeds. Well, one of the big reasons for me is I just look at a grass plant has one growing point, at least if it's an annual grass plant. And I guess I should preface everything by saying that's really what we're talking about here is annual grasses and annual broadleaves. But anyway, annual grasses have only one growing point, whereas broadleaves will have many growing points. On a broadleaf plant, what you're going to find is all the growing points are typically above ground, at least once the plant gets started, and then it's at almost every branch on that plant you're going to find another growing point. So many times a farmer will go spray a herbicide and the top of the weed will die, but then toward the bottom some new shoots will come out and then that plant will get growing again. The other thing I see, Brian, with broadleaf weeds and how they differentiate themselves from grass weeds is the size of the seed and how deep in the soil they can germinate from. For example, most grasses have a really small seed and they germinate in the top half inch to one inch of soil. So if you bury them six inches down, a lot of grasses won't even make it out of the ground. Broadleaves, on the other hand, they can germinate from fairly deep in the soil, certain species anyway, like cocklebur, for example. It used to be a real challenge for us when we were growing up on the farm. It could germinate six inches deep in the soil. So dad would go out and do some tillage and try and bury those cockleburs so we wouldn't have to fight them again. Nope, they kept on coming. And the challenge is we were trying to go out there with soil applied herbicides. Well, you can't mix a soil applied herbicide in six inches of soil and still have enough of a dose to kill anything. I love how Darren said six inches of soil and held his hands about a foot and a half apart. That's the problem when a lot of farmers identify weeds. They'll tell us, oh, we only have a weed that's two inches tall and actually it's two feet tall. Well, many times these broadleaf weeds, they grow really fast. Water hemp, for example, can grow three to four inches in a day. So when you have that enormously fast growth, then many times these broadleaf weeds get too tall to actually do a good job controlling. Well, it does kind of explain some of my fishing stories, Brian. I did catch one this big last week, you know. <laughs> you know, when we think about broadleaf weeds versus grass weeds, it really comes down to which crop are farmers struggling trying to control them in. So if you have a grass crop like corn or like wheat, for example, killing a grass weed is tougher in those crops. But in broadleaf crops like soybeans, for example, Broadleaf weeds are really tough to kill. They're just too closely related to soybeans and to get herbicides that are gonna be selective enough to kill that weed, but not hurt the crop, it's tough. Last thing I'll bring up why broadleaves are tougher for most farmers to control than grass is there are a lot more broadleaf weeds that are resistant to herbicides. So whether it's Roundup resistance, it's ALS resistance, I mean, there are many other products where we just have these resistance issues when it comes to broadleaf weeds. So it's much harder to find herbicides with no resistance that will do a great job in terms of giving control. Well, whether it's a broadleaf weed or a grass weed, we need to get weeds under control if we want our crop to be successful out in a field. And one of those weeds that we'll be addressing today is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? 